All right, so beta flight 3.3.0 is out in stable release as of today. So let's take a look. All right, so today we're just gonna look at the filtering and we're gonna talk about what the defaults are and some options for consideration. There's been a couple um, changes from release candidate two, which I did my last video on and you can check that out. So I'm not gonna go through those details again because you can look at that video. The filter, the stage two filter and the sequence and all the little, some nitty gritty details are in that. And I'll link in the upper right, ding, uh, for you to check that out and then you can come back to this one. What we wanna look at is some of the latency uh, changes. And since that last video, I have this release of this, um, essentially filter comparison spreadsheet and if you haven't seen that or downloaded that, I'll put a, I have a video on it, I'll put a link to that in the upper right, ding, and you can go check that out and download it. So this sheet is not for precise, accurate uh, uh, latency delay measurements. It's really the intent is to compare different options of uh, filter selections and gyro speeds and then implement that and then real flight, you know, performance and, and testing is, is going to be, you know, where the rubber meets the road. So fly your current setup, check this, you know, use this sheet to say, oh, okay, well, if, you know, if I move some things around, can I get a lower latency? And then fly that, and if it's better, then there you go. Some other factors that this doesn't take into account, like processor delay and, and, and other things, but you're really starting to thread the, the needle pretty tight on that. So nevertheless, uh, take it for what it is. Don't try to make it more than, it, than what its purpose is. Okay, so the default filtering is what I have up here already. That's in beta flight. So that matches what you get as a default in 3.30. One of the first things we're going to do uh, recommendations for either uh, 8K, 4K, or 16 or 32 bill, uh, kilohertz sampling. And these are my recommendations. You're going to hear a lot of different recommendations out there. But what I would first recommend doing is going into the configuration tab, as before, touched in the video, and turning on your dynamic notch. So we're going to go ahead and click that on. We're going to hit save and reboot. So the dynamic notch is great at crushing or attenuating motor noise. Turn off the static notches now that we've turned on the dynamic notch. And then here, let's jump over to the spreadsheet and start talking about this. So what we've just done is turned on the dynamic notch. So I'm going to turn this on here. Now again, it's hard to exactly get a number for this because this dynamic moves around. Uh, you can look at and get the center frequency from a flight from your FFT debug mode, which I haven't done that video yet. I'll, I'll do that in the future. But uh, just for now, since it's going to be the same in, in multiple iterations, you know, just keeping it static at some sort of uh, setting is what's the most appropriate thing. Now if you fly in one mode and then you notice that hey, if I change some other settings and I look at my FFT debug, my dynamic notch starts to go higher, then that's better because then you would push this up. So it's really, it's all about the differentials between things, not so much uh, what this overall number is down here. But you can see uh, when we were on the defaults, you know, this we're up just for comparison purposes, you know, seven points, so what is it? 7.6 milliseconds of delay. I'm going to turn on dynamic notch, turn off the static notches, and we're going to just look at that for what you would run for 4K, 8K. So you'd, you'd fly that, you would see if your motors are warm. If they're not, you want to really try to get this D-term low pass filter set to PT1. You can see the dramatic decrease in latency just by that setting. Again, fly it, see if your motors are warm. If not, try to turn off your D-term notch. Some people will be able to, some people won't be able to do this with the D-term notch. If you can't turn off the D-term notch, you probably want to get, and you have to have that on, you probably want to get into black box and see where you need to center that D-term notch to be over top of your motor noise. So from there, if you can get to this setup, that's pretty much the optimal setup for Betaflight 3.2 and even Honestly, for 3.3, uh, 
you're pretty much there. And you, ha you notice we haven't used this stage two filter yet. So an alternative you can do in stage two was my recommendation for at least for testing and flying it. We're not gonna really know what's the magic until this gets out in mass production use and people try these settings. But um, what you may wanna try to do is turn off your stage one classic low pass filter and turn on the new BQRC F2 filter and then set that down to be the same cutoff as the classic one. So you're basically swapping it out. You're not, you're not removing a filter, you're just putting in another filter. And why do I say that? So if you look at the Bode diagram, which looks at the PT1 versus the BQRC F2 filter, you can see this is the attenuation. Now, the noise that we're interested in is sub 100 hertz. So you can see this goes all the way up to 4,000. And the reason it does that is when you get into 32K mode, you get more higher end noise here that you need to attenuate. And you can see the BQRC F2 filter does a little bit better of a job than the PT1 at that, at these higher ranges. However, at the lower ranges, you know, when you're running 4K, 8K, you're not gonna really get that much noise above 1,000 hertz. It's just not going to be there. However, if you do, this BQRC F2 will do a little bit better of a job than the PT1 at attenuating it. And you can see that, you know, this is, so this is the effectiveness is the attenuation, how much it can dampen out noise. This is decimal, so it's kind of quieting it down, turning down the treble, as, as Mr. Bardwell will say. And it's a very good analogy of that noise. It doesn't cut it out. It just turns it down. It's, it keeps attenuating it. On the downside of it, the phase delay is the negative part. That phase delay, then you can equate that, and you can just look at the calcs in the spreadsheet, to milliseconds of delay. So you can see they're essentially the same thing, the PT1 and the BQRC F2, for sub 100 hertz frequencies, the phase delay is essentially the same. As it starts to trail above 100 hertz, and it's hard, these graphs are a little tight, you know, up to a five, 500 hertz, you can see, yeah, there's definitely more delay. So that tells me that this really starts to attenuate a little bit more. You just can't see it in this plot above 100 hertz. So you get a little bit more attenuation of, you know, noise frequencies above 100 hertz, and you really don't get that much more. I don't even think, it, I would argue to say not a noticeable delay from 100 hertz down. So it's a good substitute, um, but I wouldn't add them on top of each other. Because if you're going to do that, you might as well just run the biquad filter, which uh, well, that's not the right spot you change it, but you might as well just change the stage one to a biquad. If you're going to have the new BQRC turned on, and this is 4K and 8K modes, you know, gyro loop frequencies. If you're going to have both on and set around the same cutoff frequency, let's say 90 hertz or something of that nature, well, you might as well just change and just keep one on and just change this to biquad and then that doubles the attenuation of the BQRCF2. So anyways, back to the this recommendation of, you know, basically you're swapping out stage one and you're putting in the stage two, uh, which is, you know, when you're going to use the same cutoff frequency. Do note if you were on the past RC releases and have tried this and you're saying, ah, it didn't work better, there was a bug where when you set the stage one to zero hertz, which is how you disable it in Betaflight, it actually halved your PID loop frequency without you knowing it. So that bug's been fixed in the stable release. It wasn't even fixed in Release Candidate 3. It was just for fixed like the other day. So um, check that out. Now flopping back over to Betaflight to implement this, this would be set to zero. I see a lot of confusion on this. People think this is, oh, this is the this stage Two filter. No, this is the D term low pass filter. Um, so that's when we're setting this from P bi quad to PT1. That's this one over here. All right, and then we're uh, saving that. We're flying, you know, we're flying it, seeing it, you know, we're turning on the PQRCF2, which I'll do here in a second. And then these are the D term filter settings, which we talked about, you know, maybe looking at uh, turning off your dynamic notch as well. So the spreadsheet, this is matching the spreadsheet as of right now. However, we did not turn on the BQRC F2 yet. To that, it's a CLI command. You type get gyro, and you can see that the gyro 
stage two low pass underscore Hertz is right here. So this is where you would type set gyro underscore stage two underscore low pass underscore Hertz equals 90. Enter, save, there you go. All right, so now we have the stage two on at 90 Hertz and back in our filter settings, we have this all set up. So as of right now, that setup matches what we have right here. Keep in mind here as well, this is little known that, you know, when your gyro has a hardware filter in it, it's a digital low pass filter, and that is has a cutoff of 256. So essentially, even though we only seem to have one low pass filter turned on, there's always two. There's always this one at 90 and this other one at 256. Either it's the BQRC at 90 or 100 if you have a good quad, or, or maybe it goes lower to 80 if you have a noisier quad, or, in, in the past, it's been the stage one is the low pass filter and the same rules apply. And then this D-term stuff uh, about changing that to, to PT1, if you can, you gotta really keep an eye on the motor temps and then turning off the notch. Again, if you can, you gotta keep an eye on those motor temps and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that rounds up you know, the, the 4K, 8K recommendation. Let's talk about 16 to 32 kilobit recommendation. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and up my gyro frequency. And you can see right here before we leave this, we're talking about around 4.9 hertz uh, or 4.9 millisecond delay. So let's just go up 32. We're going to go for broke. We're going to change this gyro because a MPU 600 does not support 32K sampling, but an IMC 2.0 gyro chips do. Then we're going to change this from off to 32 kilohertz mode. So 32 kilohertz mode, you can see the latency on the uh, low pass filter is super low because it moves the cutoff up to 8,000 hertz. So eight kilohertz. So instead of 256, it slid that cutoff way up, you know, way off this chart. This only goes up to 600 kilohertz. So now we have this big gap. So we have this, you know, low pass filter, uh, the BQRC, because we had that on from before at 90. Essentially, since, it, since the gyro, the uh, digital low pass filter slid way up, which reduces its latency, that's great, but there's a lot of noise in between and the dynamic filters on, right? That addresses noise up to around five, 600 hertz for your peak motor noise, but there's this big gap from 500 hertz up to eight kilohertz that you can have noise and your gyro is gonna detect and it needs some additional help to crush it. So what we're gonna do in that case is we're gonna change this up to 500 hertz. We're gonna turn our stage two low pass filter back on and leave that at 90 hertz. And then we're also, yeah, if you're switching up to 32K mode, you would wanna turn these back to bi quad and turn your notch filter back on. You would do that first to fly it, test it, take an eye on your motor temps, so on and so forth. But Ultimately, you know, what's the impact on delay? Well, you can see with that, instead of now at 4.9 milliseconds of delay, you're around, this is all general comparison, a 4.2 milliseconds of delay. So there's an increase in uh, delay performance or filter sequencing, even though you added, now we have three low pass filters in play, right? We have the stage one acting at 90 hertz as the cutoff way down here. Stage two is up here at 500 hertz and then we have the dynamic notch working in between those to, to attenuate peak motor noise. And then um, from 500 hertz up, we have this BQRC F2 filter, which has a better, um, essentially a, a, a more attenuation than the PT1 would have for higher range frequency noise. Essentially, if you wanted to see what it looks like, you would uh, just look at this graph here to see what the shape looks like versus you know having this at 90 hertz you can see they're going to line up right on top of each other and then if i set this to 500 hertz it slides it down because the uh, latency for that filter the stage two would go down for lower frequencies uh, when you push that uh, that cutoff up to 500 hertz so you can see the, the change there Okay, so then to set this up in beta flight, what are we looking at? So we're back to here. We're gonna change this to 90. I'm gonna save that. Again, I'm not gonna go through the iterative step of changing this back to bi-quad, turning this back on to fly it and test it to see if your motors, 
you know, are okay and then turn them back off if you're switching up to 32K mode. But to turn the stage one filter back on, you'd set this back to 90. And then to go into the CLI, you type get gyro again, unless you've memorized it and set, set uh, what is it? Gyro stage two underscore low pass underscore hertz equals 500. Save, enter. Now, with your stage two filter set to 500 hertz, if you're finding you can't change your D-term low pass filter to PT1 because your motors get hot, or if you can do that but you can't turn off your uh, D-term notch filter, again, because your motor gets hot, it means you have a little bit too much noise. So one thing you can try to do instead of uh, not changing these, an alternative is to try to move this, this uh, cutoff frequency down to below or on top of your peak motor noise, which you really don't know unless you run a back box, but generally I would say 250 is a decent guess to be on or below your peak motor noise. Then, you know, that's going to bump up that latency, but that then will allow you to hopefully, you can hopefully see that it will allow you to change this to PT1. And then you can mess with the sheet yourself. You can see how it's better uh, delay wise to move this down a little bit than to not be able to change, so especially change this from uh, bi quad to PT1. Just to cover this little detail here, the when you set up to 32K mode um, in Betaflight, that's under the configuration tab right here. If you want to check what the stage two filter type is set to and then also what the gyro mode is set to, you type get gyro. The stage one filter type the classic you can see here is set to PT1. So if you wanted to ever change that to bi quad or fur, that's where you do it here. And then the gyro low pass filter type is set right here. Okay, so that's my recommendation. I uh, hope this helps.